Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about all of our favorite topics, Netflix. God damn. Okay, hold on guys. Okay, so I just decided I'm going to be talking about Netflix and not Hulu. Hulu will be a different video. I'm going to be mentioning TV shows and movies because personally for me to get completely invested in a TV show, it's hard for me because it just has to fit all my criteria and I'm not going to watch six seasons of just like a mediocre show. So I obviously watch a lot of shows, but I don't watch like like so many like I watch kind of a like small to medium amount of shows but I finish them all and like maybe go for a second or third time around so I'm also going to be talking about movies because sometimes you're not in the movie in the mood to watch a tv show and you just want to watch a movie so anyways yeah okay I'm going to be looking at my phone because a lot of the um stuff that I have are written down so anyways Sorry, I just have to respond to a text. Okay, so um, the first one I want to talk about is on Netflix. And some of these shows are like overlapping. Like they have Netflix and Hulu. So I'll just make a separate Hulu video or something. So for Netflix, um, the first show I want to talk about is my favorite. And it's Gossip Girl. I love Gossip Girl. I'm like literally tearing up right now because it's such a good show. Like... It is so, so, so good. Um, let me tell you though, like, this was literally my life in like eighth grade and ninth grade, tenth grade. Like, I'm gonna go for a third round right now. Like, Gossip Girl is the best show on the planet Earth. It's what made me fall in love with New York. Um, it literally has changed my life. That show is so bougie. It is such an amazing show. And it is the perfect combination of like, I don't know, but that show is amazing and everyone who I've told to get into that has loved it. The main characters are so dynamic and they're so representative of different personalities. Now, diversity and social economically, not so much because these are teenagers living in the Upper East Side, which is arguably the most expensive neighborhood in the world. Well, in the U.S. at least. And they all come from rich families and they're all white, I think. They're, yeah, they're all white. So obviously there's not much diversity there. However, they're all battling so many different things. And the show kind of teaches you that even rich people have problems too, which a lot of people forget to take into consideration. But personally, it's an amazing show. Um... I love Blair Waldorf so much. She is so cutthroat. She gets what she wants. She fights for it. Anyways, it's an amazing show. Um, please watch it. Please watch it. So the next show I'm going to be talking about is 90210. And I'm not going to be talking about the original version. Um, I think it's the remake. And the main characters are Annie and Naomi. And then there's like a couple other guys. But... The guys weren't my favorite. The only guy I liked was, um, anyway, so 90210 is basically set in Beverly Hills. Personally, I think it is an amazing show because obviously I finished the series and I love it, but I sort of think it's kind of an LA-based version of Gossip Girl that's a little less good, in my opinion, in my opinion. People can have differing opinions. I think Gossip Girl is better than 90210 because it kind of highlights more. And it, I just, I just, anyways, I just think Gossip Girl is better than 90210. But I still think 90210 is a really good show. After you finish Gossip Girl, if you feel lost like me, you can start on 90210 and it will kind of fill the vacancy because it's like Gossip Girl. It's just set in California. So yeah. The next show I'm going to be talking about is Pretty Little Liars. There is nothing much I could really say about this because it's a show of our time, whereas 90210 and Gossip Girl were a little before like my age group, but most of you guys probably watch Pretty Little Liars. Most people like it, although it is very repetitive and it gets tiring sometimes because um, it's just really tiring. It's very unrealistic, but I think the characters are all very good. I like how they each represent different personalities my favorite is spencer because she is so smart 
live for smart people anyways I think Pretty Little Liars is an amazing show it's made me feel really good it's very interesting and I just think it's a little bit of a mystery with thriller and adventure and it just shows you high school life and the struggles these girls are going through so I think Pretty Little Liars is a good show next I'm gonna be talking about Gilmore Girls and it's actually really a nice time to be talking about Gilmore Girls because they just released Gilmore Girls what is it a year in the life and I have yet to watch that because I'm saving it but Gilmore Girls was an amazing series I thought it at first I was a little hesitant because it was about a mother and daughter and I was like well you know I sort of would want more characters because like with I just thought I would want more characters than a mother and daughter however though it is an amazing series and it's a, such a down-to-earth series Rory and her mother are so cute together. They live in a small town in Connecticut, Stars Hollow, and the town really plays a big part in the story because the characters within the town are all so unique and quirky. And but there's also the type of big like out there feel because her grandparents are putting through her putting Rory through private school. She ends up going to an Ivy League school. I'm not going to say which one because that's a big part of the story. But Gilmore Girls is an amazing show. It's a feel-good show. It'll pick anyone up. The first episode is like a little eh, but it gets amazing, amazing after the first episode. And you just get so immersed in the lives of Rory and her mother, the Gilmore Girls. And I just think it's a very good show and I love it. Okay, so... I'm going to be like giving out some, what are they called? I'm going to be giving about giving out some honorable mentions to shows that didn't quite make my top list but are still good. So my first honorable mention goes to New Girl. I thought it's a funny show. I'm not so into it but it's funny and it makes you feel good. And my next honorable mention goes to The Office, and I feel like I'm going to get murdered for saying this a lot because it's a really popular show, but it's, like, hard for me to get into it because it's literally, like, one setting. It's literally just, like, an office building, and it's funny, but I feel like the storyline is never so deep, and it's just a little hard for me to get immersed into a show like that when it's sort of just strictly comedy don't get me wrong, I love comedy, I love Blackish, Fresh Off the Boat, Modern Family, those are three of my favorite shows, but I can't talk about it in this video because they're not on Netflix, but they have deeper meanings. Blackish, Modern Family, and Fresh Off the Boat all have underlying messages and themes, whereas I feel like The Office is sort of just strictly comedy and there's nothing deep about it. So sometimes I feel like I'm just watching like stand-up comedy and I could watch the Allen show for that anyways that's just my opinion so now I'm gonna be discussing my favorite movies so obviously I have to give it to Mean Girls and I'm gonna go down this list really really fast but yeah so Mean Girls cult classic I loved it um there's nothing much to say about it. it's literally just Mean Girls and I'm going to give my second award to Wolf of Wall Street. I thoroughly enjoyed that video. It's definitely rated R, so make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. There's a lot of cussing and just some scenes that are interesting, but I thought it was a good movie. I mean, I it's about business in New York and Wall Street, and that's what I want to go into, so I found the movie very relatable. And if you are into business, it's a very good movie to watch. It kind of shows you the dirty side of Wall Street, but it also shows you that startups can and will be successful if you know what you're doing and you know the tricks and everything in order to get you there. So I loved The Wolf of Wall Street. It was really entertaining for me. Um, I enjoyed it.